the one advantage of having had both public and private sector experience for this job, much of the work in Africa, outside of South Africa, involves dealing with government. It's a very small economies in general. The governments play a more significant role than we find even in South Africa, and you need to be able to understand how to deal with governments and political policy and the regulatory environment. And my public sector experience makes that a lot easier. Uh, having held, held a senior job in the South African government allows for you to have a lot of credibility in dealing with the African governments. There is a very, very clear need for the public and private sector to work together on getting government's infrastructure program implemented. I just want to give you one example of how this could be done. Let's assume four or five hundred new schools need to be built. If we go the traditional route, there will be a very long, arduous process of a number of tenders and a opportunity for a number of different designs and a whole process that will probably end up where many other programs have ended up. Overspecking the buildings and government overpaying and regretting having given it to the private sector to develop. An alternate model is to break up the 500 schools into five lots of 100 schools each, take one of them, put it out to tender in a very open, transparent way, get everybody to respond both to the specifications and the pricing, try and negotiate again after the tenders have been received to set a baseline price. Then issue the five to five different consortia of people with all of the other requirements of government, labor intensity, black economic empowerment, uh, skills training, uh, all of those included in the price at which the schools can be built. This will be a quicker process, more transparent process, that in my view will produce the building at the right spec, but also at the right price, and achieve government's other objectives, which are equally important.